afternoon, guys. Um, this is the last lecture of anatomy and physiology for you right here, starting today. And today's topic is basically going to be how we breathe. Um, so we'll start with uh, something that based the basic mechanics of breathing here. Um, the technical term for breathing is called pulmonary ventilation. Uh, I'm just going to, we should probably refer to it as breathing. Um, breathing in is referred to as inspiration or inhalation. That's when you breathe air in. Uh, and the mechanics of this, how this works, is that um, your intercostal muscles lift the ribs outward. The intercostal muscles are the muscles between the ribs, intermeaning between. And costal, like I said in uh, Tuesday's lecture, refers to ribs. The sternum uh, rises up, and then the diaphragm muscle. Uh, that contracts, and when it contracts, it actually moves downward, okay? So when it's relaxed, it's kind of dome-shaped, and when it squeezes, it pulls downward. What that does is it increases the volume um, within the lungs, within the, within the thoracic cavity. The volume goes up, the volume in the lungs goes up, and that's going to cause a decrease in the air pressure in the lungs, right? And so if you remember from chemistry, whose law is that? That when the volume of a container increases, the pressure decreases, that's Boyle's law. Um, and that's what we have here. We're gonna have a decrease in pressure in the lungs. And as a result, the pressure inside the lungs is less than it is out in the uh, atmosphere. And so air rushes into our lungs. You're not sucking air in. Um, this is a passive process. It's caused by the difference in pressure between the atmosphere and your lungs. Uh, breathing out or exhaling is called expiration, technically. When this happens, when you breathe out, what happens is the intercostal muscles between the ribs relax, so the rib cage kind of moves down and in. Uh, the diaphragm that was pulled tight relaxes and moves up. And what that does is it decreases the volume in the lungs, which causes an increase in the pressure, right? Because Boyle's law again, right? There's an inverse relationship between pressure and volume. So volume goes down, pressure goes up, air is forced out. Um, and again, this is a passive process. So what happens in the lungs, right? The key thing that happens in the lungs is gas exchange. The gas exchange that occurs in the lungs occurs through simple diffusion because the oxygen concentration is higher in the alveoli than it is in your capillaries that surround them. So the oxygen moves out of the alveoli into the capillaries. Some of that oxygen then dissolves in your blood plasma and some of it binds to heme the protein hemoglobin in your red blood cells. Um, the carbon dioxide concentration is higher in the capillaries surrounding the alveoli, so it diffuses into the blood. Some of it dissolves in the plasma. Some of it is bound to hemoglobin. And then some of it uh, combines with water to form a weak acid called carbonic acid and is stored in that carbonic acid. So um, this diagram here just shows you that CO2, whether it's dissolved in the plasma or stored in carbonic anhydrase and then released, or stored in carbonic acid and then released, um, or if it is bound to hemoglobin in your red blood cells, it is going to move uh, out of the blood and into the alveoli here. Alveolus is the singular of alveoli, and the carbon dioxide moves from your blood into an alveolus. Oxygen will move out and it will combine with hemoglobin. That's what this stands for here. That just represents the molecule hemoglobin. Uh, so you're going to have this HBO2. That's the hemoglobin with oxygen attached to it in your red blood cells. Um, and then the rest of the oxygen will dissolve in your blood plasma and be carried around the body that way. So um, typical respiration. One inspiration plus one expiration is considered to be one respiration. And in a normal adult, your breathing rate is 14 to 20 respirations per minute. That respiration rate will increase with exercise or an increase in body temperature or as a result of certain diseases where your body just starts to breathe a little bit faster. A newborn typically has a respiration rate of about 40 to 60 respirations per minute. And then you guys probably know that during sleep, your respirations decrease. Um, and you probably also know that emotion can change your rate of respiration. When you're really angry or really sad, those things tend to change your rate of respiration. Anger usually causes, for example, an increase in the rate of respiration. Because we don't want to just say change, we want to be a little more specific when we can. 
Uh, some respiratory movements that you're very familiar with, coughing is generally a deep breath followed by a forceful expulsion of air to either get something, usually to get something out of your respiratory tract. Hiccups are caused by a spasm of the diaphragm um, and then the glottis uh, closes spasmodically as well. Um, so that's kind of, in case you didn't, were always wondering what caused hiccups, is that di the diaphragm muscle spasms. Um, sneezing, air gets forced through your nose to clear the respiratory tract of something that's in there. And then yawning is uh, it's just a, basically a deep, prolonged breath. Um, it, it typically brings more blood to the capillaries of the mucous membrane in your nasal chamber. And that air, the air that gets brought in then cools the blood and that cooled blood then travels to the brain and cools it. Um, and so at night and when you start moving in the morning is when your brain temperature is highest, which is probably why you yawn at night and then yawn when you first wake up because yawning helps to um, bring more air in that cools the blood that eventually travels to the brain to cool it down. Uh, kind of interesting there. Um, your breathing rate is controlled by both neural factors and uh, chemical factors. That, um, the neural, your respiratory center that controls your breathing rate is located in the medulla oblongata, as we are all familiar with that uh, part of the brain. Um, and an increase uh, or a decrease of oxygen or carbon dioxide will trigger the respiratory center to send signals either to speed up breathing or slow it down. Um, and then there's a nerve that run that exits between somewhere between uh, your third and fifth cervical vertebrae and travels to the diaphragm uh, to get it to contract and relax. That nerve is called the phrenic nerve. So the chemical factors that I briefly mentioned on the previous slide are carbon dioxide and oxygen levels. Uh, the levels of blood carbon dioxide are detected by receptors in the brain. And then there are receptors in the aorta uh, and in the carotid arteries that detect the amount of oxygen in the blood. Um, and so uh, lower levels of oxygen will cause um, a signal from the medulla oblongata to increase breathing rate. Um, and then higher levels of oxygen in the blood would cause a decrease in the breathing rate. Uh, this little chart here just shows you some of the things that um, help control your breathing rate and your heart rate. Uh, for example, if you've got a, an increase in CO2 detected by a chemoreceptor in the brain, that signal goes to the respiratory center and uh, will cause heart rate to go up, breathing rate to, um, to, uh, to go up as well. So all of those things. Um, so types of respiration, right? Apnea, you may have heard of sleep apnea. Apnea is when there's no breathing. Sleep apnea occurs um, in, uh, at night when people will stop breathing all of a sudden at night. Um, uh, if you're obese, if you're a male, if you're over 40, you're at a higher risk of sleep apnea. Um, and sleep apnea can uh, lead to heart failure and stroke if not treated. So that's why you see people with sleep apnea um, will have those um, CPAP machines that help them breathe at night um, so that they don't stop breathing. People with sleep apnea also typically uh, wake up feeling much less rested because of the interrupted sleep that they have. Um, another type of respiration called dyspnea is when you have difficult or labored or painful breathing. Um, and if a sudden onset of dyspnea can be an indication of a heart attack or a stroke, uh, so if, the, if you have dyspnea uh, onset suddenly, you want to seek medical attention right away. Uh, some people experience a diff difficulty in breathing when their body's in a horizontal position, so like when they're laying down or sleeping. Um, and that can be caused by heart failure as the, if the left side of the heart is failing, blood will pool in the lungs. So typically that can be fixed or, uh, you know, stopped by simply sitting up or standing up. Uh, hyperpnea is an increase in the depth and rate of breathing. So you get an abnormal exaggeration of respiratory movements. Think about like when you've been exercising really strenuously and you're taking those big deep breaths, that's, that's hyperpnea. Uh, tachypnea is rapid and shallow breathing. Um, that could be a sign of COPD. Um, that could be a sign of pneumonia or it can be caused by obesity. And then bradypnea uh, is breathing more slowly than normal. Um, and that can actually be a sign of carbon monoxide poisoning or a drug overdose. And then finally, you've probably heard of hyperventilation, which is 
uh, rapid breathing that causes the body to lose carbon dioxide too quickly. And as a result of losing that carbon dioxide, uh, the blood CO2 levels decrease, um, and the blood pH levels increase, and it leads to something called alkalosis, uh, which causes dizzy, uh, dizziness and possible fainting. And the treatment that you may have seen is to have a person breathe into a paper bag, because as they breathe into that bag, they inhale that carbon dioxide that they exhaled, um, and that will bring their blood pH back down um, to normal levels. And that's all I have for today.